Hey everyone, it's Snarky Pete, and I'm here to share with you some of my June 2011 favorites. Um, I've got quite a lot of makeup items I've used, and a couple not, but um, I'm just going to jump right in. And first off, I'm going to do the lip swatches because I love these. Um, I've been looking for a good lip stain, and I finally found one. It's Color Sensational from Maybelline, and it's a bright fuchsia color. This one is 45 Bitten Berry. And this one is here on the top half. That's the swatch right there. Um, I like bright, especially for summertime. And <laughs> what I do is I have another lipstick from Wet n Wild. And this is 521A, which is also a bright fuchsia. A little bit brighter than the lip stain. But what I do is I wear them together. So the bottom half of these swatch is the lip stain and lipstick combined. And this second pink swatch here is the lipstick by itself. Very long lasting, very moisturizing. I am so impressed by the quality of both of these products. Um, the lip stain is not drying. It doesn't make you feel like your lips are going to crack and peel or whatever. Um, and the color stays. Like I've eaten entire meals and a couple of like fried meals and I still have the stain on my lips. So as far as staying power, that's awesome. Um, the Wet n Wild colors I'm really starting to get into now because the quality I'm finding is a heck of a lot better than it was when I was younger. So the next two swatches are my Wet n Wild colors and these are two Mega Last lip colors. Um, it's 911D which is the very pretty bright red here and 901B which is the lighter pink and these will stay on pretty much like the lip stain. They'll last through almost anything. Um, the light pink I currently have on, but I have a lip gloss over them because it is just a little too pink for me and it looks funny when I wear it by itself, even if I put lip liner on. They don't tend to feather unless you put too much on, but I've only done it with the red one, not the pink one. Um, as far as the other fuchsia lipstick, this one here, I haven't had any problems with it. They are all very moisturizing, they feel wonderful, they last a long time, and I'm very impressed with them. Over my lips tonight, I have this New York Color NYC Extreme Lip Glider Lip Gloss. And this is Riverside Rouge, it's 527U. And I don't know if you can really see the pretty ruby color that this is. I'm hoping you can. But that is these two swatches here. And I, like I said, I have it on my lips tonight. So, applied alone, it almost looks like a lacquer on your lips without being sticky. It's not thin. It won't kind of, it won't get runny on your lips or come off. It just kind of, it's a awesome, awesome, awesome lip gloss uh, without being sticky and it's not like getting everywhere. Um, this is just blended out a little bit to show you that it still is very pretty even when it's blended out two other lipsticks which I am really super impressed with this month and have been using aside from my bright lips when I do neutral lips are ELF's new matte lip colors. I also have these in praline but I have not used it yet but I have natural and tea rose. Um, tea rose is here, natural is here and these go on absolutely wonderfully. They are very moisturizing, they taste good, there's a little hint of sugar in there, they smell good um, your lips do not dry out, they do not crack or feel like you have a dry mouth. They feel like you have a normal lipstick on them, but when you look in the mirror, you've got matte, beautiful lips without the dryness of a lot of other colors that they tend to do. The other swatch on my hand is a blush, and this is my favorite one at the moment. I packed this on kind of heavy so that you can actually see the color of it, but it is Evocative from Cyrene. And it's here. So I hope you can see that. It's a really, really pretty pink. I'm very picky with my blushes um, because I am so fair. I just like a wash, a very light wash of color on my cheekbones. I don't like anything dark, dramatic, unless that's what I'm going for. So this particular color, I'm never giving up. So Fairney's got a customer for life. And speaking of which, as far as eye primers go, I use my Beauty Addictions Shadow Poxy. It's very creamy. It applies wonderfully. It smooths out absolutely wonderfully. Um, very easy to apply. I do have a few friends I did recommend this to and they did have a little bit of a problem with their shadows creasing. 
It's more because they had a oily lids problem. So if you have oily lids, there is a trick you can do is either put a touch of cornstarch over your primer once you've applied it to your eyes, or go ahead and just pat a little bit of high definition powder on, let that set for a minute, and then go ahead and do your shadows. So that should cut down on the creasing for you. The other product, which I didn't quite understand what all the fuss was about, and now I understand, is Firenze Pixie Epoxy. And I bought two of these tubes once I found out that Firenze was back open and selling these. So I picked two up, and of course I had to try it out, and I will never give this up either. This just is amazing. For those of you who use a lot of sparkly shades, um, very glittery, if you're applying glitter or shades with a lot of glitter, um, even metallic shades, this stuff when applied makes them look foiled. On my eyes right now, I have La Fontaine from Antoinette's Revolutions Cosmetics, and I used pixie epoxy over it, or under it rather, first, and that's why it looks like it's been foiled onto my eyes um, without actually having to foil the shadows. So you do use a little bit more than you would normally applying shadows, but totally worth it because it gives you that definition of having colors foiled. And I love it. This is like a holy grail item for me. As far as colors, my three favorite this month have been California Girl from Hi-Fi Cosmetics. And that's this sparkly gold thing right here. My favorite. I have been wearing this almost every time I apply my makeup. Um, this one here is Damask from Antoinette's Revolution Cosmetics. I've been wearing this one sometimes together. And this one here is Gardens from ARC. And this is probably my favorite green ever. Applied over primer. Um, these are just applied dry, just to show you kind of quickly how the swatches look. Uh, when applied over primer, these are like very well pigmented. Um, Hi-Fi California Girl is like liquid gold over primer. And Damask and Gardens from ARC basically just have that much more of a pop, but they're still very, very beautiful without primer. And they last. As far as nail polish, I have been addicted to Sinful Colors Gorgeous. And that's actually what's on my nails right now. Um, I do have another polish over it. I can't remember which. What's the matter, baby? My kitty cat's crying. Um, this is 293 Gorgeous, and it is a gorgeous color. It's a blue, purple, and a touch of green shifter from Sinful Colors. This reminds me of a peacock's feathers. So love it. As far as doing my nails, I also have two other products I love. Um, Orly's Bonder. It's a rubberized base coat which I use underneath my nails. It helps your manicure last for up to a week. Sometimes I can go a little bit more than a week without really chipping or having the polishes pop off. Um, really helpful and it really keeps the polishes secured to your nails. Uh, mine are about a week old and you can't tell because I'm not close up because I have a little bit of a gap there now from my nail growing but um, I did these last week and they still look brand new and the other is Seche V and this is a fast dry top coat and I am into nail stamping so for those of you who know what I'm talking about um, I do use the Conad system so I have my stamper which I love um, but with the stampers I find that sometimes top coats will smear and the Seche V does not so I love this stuff. I actually got the Pro Bottle, so I think it was it was a big, huge bottle for like $23 on Amazon instead of 7 or $8 a little bottle, so I definitely saved on that one. And these are my little nail stampers. Love them. So I have the fishnet, the zebra, the leopard, little flowers, there's a couple little lace patterns here. And that one is M57. This one is M60, and I have an abstract flower, variegated dots, a, I can't remember the name, it's not hound's tooth, can't remember the name of that pattern, and a, almost like a flannel pattern here, and flowers. These are my two favorite plates. These are the ones I've been using this month, even though I haven't shown anybody but my nail swatches. I've been awful, but I love to stamp on my nails. This one I just did for the 4th of July because I wanted blue sparkly nails because I had really glittery eyes. And along with that I have my Ruby Stone. It's a crystal nail file. 
I'm never giving this thing up. You do have to be careful because if you file too close and catch your skin on the edge of this file, you will cut yourself because it is glass. It's crystal. But this is probably the best file I have ever owned. I think it was two or three dollars to buy. Totally worth it. I will definitely get more. Although I think this thing will last me like 20 years. Love it. A lot. Now you've probably noticed I am a blonde again, which means I got rid of my bright red hair. So I've spent a lot of June um, and a lot of May trying to dye my hair back to my blonde colors. Um, the camera kind of shows it as a yellow brassy golden, which it's not. I'm platinum blonde up front here, and I have mixtures of really pretty golds um, and some darker browns back here. It's not brassy, so don't trust the camera. <laughs> um, but in order to save my hair really, really well, I've been using Organics Coconut Milk, and this is a split ends mender. I use like one pump of this, and I mix it with my Aussie Tisno Frizz Gel, and this is a very light, flexible hold um, gel, which I use when I blow dry my hair. So the combination of these two have really saved my hair. I'm not fried out like I thought I'd be. And when I blow dry my hair, it's just like absolutely wonderful. It just, I have a weird little curly thing, which I hate. Everybody makes fun of me because of it, but I don't like it. Um, so when I blow dry my hair, it comes out nice and straight without the curl. And you guys are probably going to think I'm funny for even saying this. Um, I've been using Monistat's Chafing Relief Gel to Powder. It says powder gel whatever. It comes out as a gel and it dries to a powder finish. I've been using this as a face primer. It works wonders. Like, amazing. My makeup does not move at all. Um, whatever concealer and foundation I have, no problems. It stays on where it's put, and that's that. So, I love it. Um, the main ingredient in a face primer is dimethicone, and that's one of the main ingredients in there, so instead of paying $10 or more for a more well-known facial primer, I just use that. It's cheaper. It works. It's not breaking me out or making me look funky, so I'm not complaining. And what else? I use Nivea Soft on my skin. Love this cream. I use this twice a day, morning and evening. I only buy it in the big tub. You can find it in a little travel size one if you want. Um, soft. It's non-greasy. It sinks in. It leaves your skin gorgeous. Flawless. Um, I use Witch Hazel as a toner, and this is just T.N. Dickinson's Witch Hazel. It's an all-natural astringent. I just use a cotton pad or a cotton ball, wipe this over my face after I wash it at night, and then moisturize. And my face loves me for it. And my foundation I will never, ever, ever give up is Meow Cosmetics. Um, you get like a half a cup of powdered foundation in here. And I've only had this for like four or five months. Maybe not even that long. And I haven't even really dipped into this at all. You can see how full it is in that jar. It's like half a cup. It's like $23 for a size. Um, how much is it? 30 gram net weight. 30 grams of product. And I really haven't even put a dent in it that much. I will tell you that when applying foundation, I do have a new technique. And that involves using a stippling brush. Meow's containers are awesome because they make they, they use the jars with the lids big enough so you can dip your brush in. I had previously been using the kabuki method to put my foundation on, but I've now switched to the stippling brush method. And basically what that is is spraying a little bit of water onto my brush just to dampen it and dumping my foundation into the cap, swirling around and just stippling it all over my face, brushing it in, and it literally looks like airbrushed makeup, so I don't end up looking cakey or powdery or using a ton of product like you would with a kabuki brush, because as we all know, when you kind of swirl around your face, it kind of goes poof, and I usually end up with a ton of fallout on me, so um, that's about it. Those are my products that I love for June 2011, and I have a lot more for July adding up already, um, but that's it for now, and I will see you guys soon. Bye!